In January 1991, the Persian Gulf War unfolded live on television sets around the world. The United States, Saudi Arabia, the United Kingdom, Egypt, Syria, and France joined 30 other countries to fight off the threats of one man, President Saddam Hussein of Iraq. In a matter of months, the Allied forces had dealt a crushing blow to Hussein's military campaign in the tiny Arab Emirate of Kuwait. But world opposition didn't deter his thirst for power. In fact, it pushed him to greater levels of oppression. Hussein continued to rule his country with an iron fist, enjoying his dozens of palaces and a personal wealth estimated at over $5 billion. He is a modern-day tyrant, a throwback to the days when powerful men built vast empires with violence and intimidation, when wealth and power were won by ruthless leaders or bestowed from one family member to the next. Now, in the modern world, those things do still matter, but increasingly, power in the modern world becomes a matter of military mobilization, economic capability, bureaucratic control, and control of means of communication. In other words, power in the modern world becomes a far more complicated technological phenomenon than it had been in the ancient world. It is no longer possible to carve out new empires where powerful ones already exist. No nation will be permitted to brutally assault its neighbor. Saddam Hussein's foray into Kuwait lasted only seven months. So today's tyrants focus their power inward, using everything available to control the people in their own countries. The modern government has the availability of information to know where people are, know what they own, to in other words have a surveillance of them that was inconceivable for Louis XIV or Napoleon. And also a modern government has an infrastructure of power and of strength, of civil service, um, control over telecommunications, which was just absent in the past. In the 800 years since Genghis Khan tried to conquer the world, technology and global politics have made the moniker universal ruler or master of all lands all but obsolete. There's no single person in the world who will have the kind of single-handed power that Genghis Khan had, but we don't need to look back that many centuries. We can say that there's no one in the world today with the power of people who were alive in our lifetimes. Stalin, Mao, and uh, going back a little earlier, Hitler. Those men, the three biggest dictators of the century, will not be rivaled again because they wrought their oppressiveness on vast panoramas. Today's uh, tyrants, odious as they are, are punks compared to Hitler, Stalin, and Mao. Today's tyrants may operate on a smaller scale, but the damage they cause in their quest for wealth and power is just as real. The riches they plunder are no longer spread among the people like Genghis Khan or used to build a grand capital city like Peter the Great. They are wired to hidden Swiss bank accounts or used to line the pockets of a select few. It happens over and over again in the Philippines and Serbia, Zaire and Haiti. In Kosovo, millions of Albanians were forced into refugee camps. Thousands killed, entire cities destroyed. Mass graves and burnt buildings only hint at the destruction caused by the man they call the Butcher of the Balkans. He is President Slobodan Milosevic of Yugoslavia. His wars have not built a new empire, but devastated his country and brutalized his people. It's the Don Corleones of this world, who are essentially running rackets uh, at the expense largely of their own domestic populations. The only point of most of these regimes uh, is the personal profit uh, of the dictator and his family, and, and their power can really be measured in the number of pairs of expensive designer shoes their wives own. That was the case in 1986 when Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos was ousted after 20 years in office. 
A mob stormed Malakanyan Palace, breaking through gates and pushing past soldiers. For years, the Marcos family lived in splendor, while half of the country's 50 million people lived in poverty, some searching for food in city garbage dumps. It was the same story in Zaire in May 1997, when Tutsi rebels took control of the government and forced President Mobutu Sese Seko out of the country. For the 31 years of his iron rule, Mobutu lined his pockets with money gained from Zaire's diamond, copper, and cobalt mines. The World Bank estimated that in the 1980s, up to $400 million a year in export revenue mysteriously vanished. And in May 1998, Indonesia's President Suharto was forced from office at the age of 76, leaving that country's economy in ruins. Reports claim that during his 30-year reign, $73 billion passed through his family's hands. It's a very interesting question to ask yourself what drives people to be so repressive for their own um, gain, because in the end, they almost all end the same way, uh, either out of power or in exile or in prison or killed. And yet, in the 20th century, time and time again, innocent people have been uprooted by the megalomaniacal designs of people like Hitler, Stalin, Saddam Hussein, Milosevic, and so on. These are very strange things because it isn't necessary to do this to people in order to rule. The quest for wealth and power has never been without its casualties. Alexander the Great destroyed entire cities. Genghis Khan slaughtered millions. Peter the Great used his own people for slave labor. In the modern world, we expect our leaders to rule in a more civilized manner, and most do. But there will always be some who are so seduced by the possibilities of unlimited wealth and absolute power that nothing will stand in their way. Napoleon once tried to explain his desire for unbridled power. I love power, he said, as a musician loves his violin. The British writer Edmund Burke said there's a natural reluctance to give up authority. Those who have been intoxicated with power, he said, can never willingly abandon it. But in the newly formed United States, President George Washington, who could easily have been elected time and again, chose to relinquish power after just two terms. Washington, who refuted Burke's argument, set an example for the world. For the History Channel, I'm Roger Mudd. Thanks for watching. This is a making a buck history of thought all day today on the History Channel. Now, I'm sure you've heard the story of Cain and Abel, but did you know that historians have never been able to answer the biggest question about the murder? Why? Secrets of the Ancient World examines each clue, each motive to solve Cain and Abel, a murder mystery. Tonight at 8 on the History Channel. Now, an exclusive home video offer from the History Channel. You can own the complete Wealth and Power series, four hours on two video cassettes for $39.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-708-1776 or order online at historychannel.com.